David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. I've often had people ask me what I look for in a pen. You know, what gets me excited about a new offering? It could be a number of things, but mainly I'm attracted to things that are different and unique. Something I could add to my collection that I don't already own, or something that when I first look at it, I feel it has a high cool factor. The pen I'll be showing you today checked a lot of those boxes for me and was something I was really excited about purchasing. And the thing is, a high cool factor doesn't necessarily need to be accompanied by a high price tag. The pen that I'm going to be showing you today is reasonably priced at just $80. And that pen is the Twisby VAC 700 R Iris. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the VAC 700 R Iris. I'm going to talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, some size comparisons. Uh, I'll also go over the differences between the original VAC 700 and the redesigned VAC 700 R and provide a writing sample. Uh, this is a pen that I purchased on my own. It is not a loan or it was not provided by a retailer. Uh, the pen arrives in this standard Twisby box. Um, inside there are some instructions. I will give Trisby, uh, Twisby credit for updating the graphics on their user guide here to reflect the difference between the 700 and the 700R. Um, as I mentioned up top, I'll detail those differences here in a little bit. And then here is the pen in the box. I've always liked Twisby's packaging. Um, the pen sits in this little tray here, um, and it's kind of held in place by kind of like the stocks from back in the day where they'd punish people out in the town square by locking their head and hands through boards. These little plastic pieces come off, and, the, and you can remove the pen. The bottom of the box is something that you can remove. My hands are a little slippery. Um, it's easy to, uh, to overlook, but it's something you want to uh, make note of because underneath you have a couple of spare O-rings and also some silicone grease and this little wrench. Um, the wrench is something that is really helpful uh, because uh, this wrench is, can fit many other piston filling pens, not just Twisby's. So it's a helpful tool. And here is the pen, the VAC 700R Iris. Uh, it is a special edition with limited production run. Uh, the pen features a clear demonstrator body with a rainbow colored iridescent trim. Now I've seen this treatment on a number of pens and I think it looks great. Uh, I believe this is a, a heat treatment, so it's not something that should chip or wear over time. And due to the nature of this treatment, every pen will vary in color, making each one unique. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the cap. I've always liked the finials of Twisby pens. Uh, many are similar to this pen with the company logo featured under a transparent bulb of resin. Uh, the clear plastic gives it kind of a cool three-dimensional look that I think is pretty neat. The metal surrounding the top of the cap has the rainbow treatment and this transitions into the clip. The treatment looks really great on this clip. Uh, the clip has a heavy matte finish, which I find accentuates the rainbow treatment. Uh, here's a microscope shot of the clip. Uh, on my pen, you can see it's more of a purple in the middle surrounded by a turquoise blue on the edges. The cap is transparent. Uh, there's a slightly translucent inner cap. Uh, I like that there are two orientations for the nib when capped. One has the nib facing up in alignment with the clip and the other has it facing down. Uh, the other FAC 700 in my collection isn't quite as perfectly aligned, so I'm uncertain whether the alignment is intentional or just random. Uh, at the end of the cap, there is a band. On one side, it is engraved with Twisby, and on the other, it has VAC 700R. And then there is a very small step down to the barrel. The barrel tapers down at an even angle until you get to another treated ring, and then we have the piston knob. It's faceted and slightly rounded. I like how you could kind of get a good look at the inner workings on the knob. Uh, the different layers almost give it a bit of a kaleidoscope look. The cap twists off in a rotation and a half, and underneath we have one of the highlights of this pen, the stainless steel number no. six nib. It's available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and a 1.1 stub. The nib is stamped with Twisby and the company logo, and the forward portion has that spectacular treatment. 
there's a couple of things I really like about the treatment on this nib. You can see here with this microscope shot how crisp the treatment is up against the stamping on the nib. It doesn't bleed over to the other side. Precision like that is something that I really appreciate. Then toward the tip of the nib, there's some prominent rainbow shading. Then something I thought was a nice touch, the underside of the nib has the same treatment, peeking out from the top of the feed. And here's a look at the rest of the plastic feed. The section begins with a treated metal ring with a slight flare. And then you can see the metal sleeve on the inside of the section has the treatment as well. This section is just slightly angled. There is only about six tenths of a millimeter of rise from the beginning to end, where it transitions into the threads and a fairly steep step up to the barrel. I find the section to be comfortable. It's plenty long enough to accommodate a number of grip locations. Um, I find the barrel long enough to use comfortably unposted. Uh, while the cap does fit on the end of this barrel, it's not designed to post. It's not secure and rattles around a bit. So this pen is designed to use unposted. As the name would imply, this pen utilizes a vacuum filling system. You unscrew the back and extend the piston. You can insert it into the bottled ink of your choice and depress, and then the ink is sucked up into this generous ink chamber. I'll actually show you how to ink this up here in a bit, and I'll also give you a little tip on how you could get a more complete fill with this pen, uh, as well as with any other vacuum filler where you have a good look at the ink supply. Now, I mentioned this up top, but there are some differences between the 700 and the 700R. They're mostly internal, uh, but stay tuned after the size comparisons and I'll show you what those differences are. The standard Twisby VAC 700 retails for $65, making it, in my opinion, one of the best pens you can buy in that price range. This special edition Iris model sells at a slight premium and retails for $80, which I feel is reasonable for the added treatment to this model. Uh, this Twisby VAC 700R Iris Special Edition uh, will have a limited production run, like I said. Once they are gone, they are gone. And most retail sites have already sold out of their allotment. I'm not sure who still has them available, but if you could find one, I would highly recommend snatching one up. Uh, they won't last long. As soon as I saw this pen, I knew it would be popular. It's a solid pen that performs well. It has a cool and interesting look, a great filling mechanism, and is reasonably priced. So pretty much everything you could ask for. So if you're still looking for one of these, good luck in your search. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons. I'll show you the differences between the 700 and the 700R, and I'll ink this pen up and provide a writing sample. go with some size comparisons for the Twisby VAC 700R Iris. Uh, here it is with a, a whole bunch of other Twisbys. This is the Diamond 580. Then here it is with the Go. And here it is with the Eco. And then in regard to some other Twisbys, here it is with the VAC Mini. Here it is with the regular Mini. And then here it is with a VAC 700. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with a Diamond 580. Then here it is with an Eco. And here it is with the Go. Now, I mentioned I was going to show some comparisons as to what is different between the VAC 700R and the original VAC 700. Um, most of everything is internal. There is a couple of things. First of all, this back portion right here, you can see that on the 700R this is metal as opposed to plastic. And then all of the other changes are kind of in this portion of the pen right here. Let me go ahead and take this apart. Um, that's one great thing about Twisbees is they're very easy to disassemble. Um, one change, it's a little hard to see here, but it's easy to see that on the 700R, there is two O-rings, uh, and on the regular 700, there is only one O-ring there. But the main difference here is with the plunger at the end of the barrel. 
on, let me extract this just a little bit, or maybe you can see it in here. On the regular 700, you can see here that the, the uh, plunger has a little additional piece at the top. And that additional piece would be what would actually go into the section to plunge up the ink supply. And what they found is at times it could get a little bit stuck in there because when you needed to open up the uh, valve here in order to have the ink flow, um, sometimes it would get a little bit stuck in there. And then other times you would have to pull it back a little bit more in order to get the ink flowing. Uh, and then when you pushed it shut, there was a risk for some of the ink to kind of spurt out. So they went ahead and redesigned this and you can see that that additional piece is now gone from the end. And you can get a good look at that up top, that there's no additional piece. Um, and let me go ahead and assemble these again and show you kind of what I mean by that, is on the regular 700, when you would go to uh, untwist the piston and you can see here that it is still plunged in there and you'd have to back it up a little bit in order to get that other plunger out. And here on the 700R, when you open up the plunger, now you could just twist it open and you can see that there is now a gap in there uh, and you're not having to further pull the plunger out. Uh, and so it, um, uh, it still does a good job of plugging up the end when it's closed, but then when it's open, uh, there's no issues with that other additional piece right there. Okay, let's ink up this pen. And what we're gonna use is an ink that I'm gonna be reviewing here in the next few days, which is a brand new ink from Le Bon, and this is Apollo Orange. They have a whole new ink line with a number of different colors. We'll see, I haven't made up my mind if I'm gonna review this or one of the other colors that they sent me, but this orange is a nice color. So in order to ink up this VAC 700, we unscrew the piston, bring it back, we go ahead and insert this into, let me see if I angle it slightly without dumping out any of the ink. And you can see that it fills up maybe about half of the barrel there. Now, a little tip that I have learned is if you'd like to get a little bit more of a fill on here, you could try this again. So let's go ahead and fill it again. And that got just maybe a tiny bit more in there. But if you would like to get even more than that, what I found is if you go ahead, yeah, this is a rather delicate operation, so you need to be careful with this. But if you go ahead and pull this back and then you slowly push up the piston, now you have to maintain some even pressure on this back here. And if you push up the piston until the point where the ink is going up into the section, you gotta make sure you don't push it out, then you stick it in the bottle, and then you complete the fill. You can see here that we went from like halfway to now a completely full fill. So that uh, turned out really nice. And that's a little trick that you could use, even on uh, some of the piston fillers, you could do that as well. But usually it works best when you have a good look, so you can make sure that you're not pushing the ink out too far, because you don't want to just squirt it across the room. So here we go with the writing sample for the Twisby VAC 700, 700R rather. And this is the Iris. And the ink, oh, this is actually a medium stainless steel nib. And the ink as I showed you was Le Bon. Uh, Apollo Orange. This is what the ink looks like. Not that one. This one right there. Uh, this is what the ink looks like. Um, that You could see that when it's applied heavily, uh, there is a little bit more shading, but then it can be a little bit on the light side as well. Um, I, it's very similar to something like Diamine Blaze Orange, but isn't quite as vibrant as something like uh, Ackerman Orange Boven. And then here we go with the rest of the writing sample.
Um, I've always cared for Twisby's nibs, that I think that they're decent quality for the price, um, that uh, that they write just fine. They do really very well. Um, that it's fairly smooth with a bit of feedback. Um, and it's the ink flow on here is generally fine. And in regard to reverse writing, It is very sharp, and I'd say that this pen, at least this particular one, didn't work very well in reverse writing. But in regard to some fast writing, there's no issue whatsoever. So there you have the Twisby VAC 700R Iris. Uh, as I said, uh, this is a pen that I was excited about purchasing. It really checked off a lot of boxes for me. Uh, I think it looks cool, it performs great, um, and Twisby makes a lot of good models that are very good values for the budget. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.